Imagine squatters turning your property into their personal playground. You'd think a call to the cops would send them packing, right? But when squatters know the system, that's where the eviction nightmare actually begins after you call the cops. And one false move could cost you everything. So today we're diving into the thick of it with five gripping tales of landlords wrestling back control from their unwanted guests. And three of these battles happen in the courts, but two, they take it to the streets. So strap in because these squatter sagas are as real as they get. Why is this homeless Seattle student pilot living in his van with his dog Wally while he pays the mortgage on the house he owns here? Something I can't fully wrap my head around. This guy, Jason Roth, leased out his home, but the tenant has since turned squatter when he stopped paying rent five months ago and now refuses to leave. Jason hasn't been able to resolve the issue with the tenant and is now waiting for his first eviction hearing where the total process is currently taking 12 months. Legal stuff moves slower than a snail race and some squatters can play this game so well that they can even turn your property into their own cash machine while they wait for the process. So rule number one, you gotta vet your tenants like you're a private eye. Background checks, they're non-negotiables. But there's more. It's one of those things you just can't make up. I do come here just to look at my house and wish I could be in it. While Jason waits for the legal process, the city issued the squatter a short-term rental license where he now has it listed on Airbnb for $433 a night. At the very least, he's generating $2,000 a month. Poor Jason, I mean, this is like the movie Home Alone. But the burglars, they're throwing the party and they didn't invite Jason. So here's the deal, if they stop paying, Act fast. Start with serving the squatter a formal written notice that they've broken their agreement and they need to hit the road by a set date. I mean, it's okay to be kind and show some empathy, but the clock's ticking. It's important to act quickly and decisively because delays, they can result in squatters gaining additional rights, making the process much more complicated. You can always hit the pause button on the eviction process if things change, but you can't rewind the time. Let's look at this one. This squatter's bold plan to steal a house and sell it. And being arrested, that didn't deter him at all. Imagine if you could walk into a house that you don't own and just sell it. Well, this guy, Joseph Guerin, moved into this vacant house owned by Richard and Kristen Craven, who inherited it from her parents in 2022. Guerin changed the locks, put the utilities under his name, and then proceeded to install new kitchen countertops, paint the place, and then he ripped up the carpets to install new tile flooring. Squatters like Joseph, they keep their eyes on the newspaper, on the probate listings, as a method for identifying which homes are ripe for the taking. A probate sale is the court-supervised process of selling a piece of real estate when an individual dies intestate or without a will and in this case, rehabbing and selling. Frequent checks on your properties, those are important. You wanna lock it down, you wanna camera it up, and if someone's redecorating without your permission, it's time to call more than just the police. It's lawyer o'clock. Guerin then listed the property for sale online for $225,000. When the owners called the police, there was little that they could do because Guerin was able to show he was the owner due to forged property tax documentation. At least it was good enough to confuse the police. But an arrest was made, and 48 hours after being being released on bond, Guerin moved back in and is trying to complete the sale. The police have thrown up their arms and they're leaving it to the civil court to sort out. If a squatter is not budging even after your legal notification, it's time for the big guns, an unlawful detainer lawsuit. It's court time after that, where you'll tell the judge your story and hope that they give you the green light to reclaim your turf. It's a marathon that can thin out your wallet and test your patience. But it doesn't always have to be. I mean, check out this handyman who's not just swinging a hammer, but swinging the squatter rules in the landlord's favor. This handyman right here found a very clever way to remove squatters from his mom's house. I mean, he really flipped the script on him. So this guy right here, Flash, Flash Shelton, he spent a week reading up on landlord laws and discovered that although an owner of a property has limited rights against squatters, a tenant with a lease on that property has superior rights against squatters. So what do you do? Well, he signed a lease with his mom, he waited till the squatters left for the day, quickly moved in, locked the place up, and then set up cameras. It's all about knowing the landlord-tenant playbook. If you get that down, you're set to make some real power plays yourself. When they returned, he told them, this is my home now, and if you try to break in, I've got cameras set up all over the place, and I will prosecute for breaking and entering. I mean, they had nothing, and he gave them a day to get their things, and they were gone. Flash isn't just a handyman. He's a squatter-busting strategist, turning property problems into checkmate moves. Flash has his own YouTube channel. I put a link for you in the description. All right, so here's a twist. Even landlords who do everything by the book can get a rough deal, like this next guy. Despite winning in court, he had to go in and roll up his sleeves and get his hands dirty. 
These squatters right here really overestimated this landlord's empathy and drastically underestimated what he's willing to do to remove them from his property. I mean, he's taken no prisoners. Collier Merrill of Pensacola, Florida, a pillar of his community, won a court injunction last August for the squatters to vacate, but he graciously gave them time to find a new place to live. But now the April deadline, it's come and gone. Now there are more squatters than before, even encroaching into neighboring properties and engaging in drugs, prostitution, fighting, lighting fires, and everyone's favorite, public death. Defecation. Public oh defecation. God. Merrill has had enough and today stated publicly that he will remove the squatters by whatever means necessary. Merrill's that generous landlord you picture in your head, the one who helps out when renters hit a rough patch. But be warned, some might see your goodwill as a green light to push boundaries. Here are three creative ways for him to remove the squatters that refuse to leave. You're gonna love the third one. One, squat the squatter. Occupy the property and become such a nuisance that even the squatter can't stand it. Turn about, it's fair play. Two, rent construction equipment and leave it in the yard. Fire it up for good measure and be loud about it. And my number three, announce a critical pest inspection, if you know what I mean. I mean, sometimes landlords, they reach their limit and they gotta get tough. And before I give you an example of that in our next story, understand that these run-ins with squatters, it's not the normal landlord experience, but they can be very real if you let your guard down. So to know the law, stand your ground and stay sharp, and you'll be on your way to the wealth and freedom that real estate promises. Subscribe to stay on top. Now, let's take a look at those more frequent moments when squatters really get what they deserve. These fed up homeowners, right? Right here found clever ways to remove squatters from their properties. I mean, they're really getting creative and pushing the law to its limits. When this guy's squatters left for the day, he walked into his property noting $20,000 of damage and then turned the tables on them damaging their property, slashing tires and bashing TVs. Now this guy, Jeremy, he's got a three-step process for removing squatters. First, he tries to pay him off, cash for keys. Second, he goes the legal route. And when that doesn't work, and it typically doesn't, the old stink bomb in the basement trick. If you think these measures are extreme, just wait, because when you play by the rules, this can be your nightmare. This Brentwood property has been squatter occupied for more than two years, and the owner is now being sued by the squatter for lack of proper permits and harassment. Push people too far though, things can escalate quickly, like in this Las Vegas neighborhood. They ain't playing here, and sometimes it even goes the distance. Thanks for watching, see you next time.